Hello, welcome to the Honest War Gamer. I'm your host, Rob, and this is the Age of Sigma Stat Center, where every Monday, although this is recorded on a Wednesday because I've been traveling back from Canada, where I played in the Warhammer Fantasy Battle Tournament for some reason, uh, every Monday we go through the Age of Sigma results and events from the weekend. Uh, this is also backed up by the stats, which I know if you've been on the Honest War Gamer website, haven't been updated in a while. Uh, one of our stats people has been quite sick, and I've mentioned this several times, but I will, I do want you to know that we're getting closer and closer. Uh, to solving uh, that as a as a thing for the future, so you do expect do expect to see the stats updated soon. Here's a quick kind of snapshot of uh, what things like that may look like in the future. And if you listen to this as a podcast, you haven't seen, but it is going to be updated. And we've spent a bit of time trying to work out exactly the way that's going to look like. Uh, and also, if you help support us on Patreon, that helps us pay for more bits to fix stuff like this. So please do that, which would be cool. However. I read through the event results every weekend. I feel like I've got a good grasp on what's going on in the game right now. Uh, I also host loads of events, so we're going to look at the events from this weekend. And the health of Age of Sigmar is very good. The game is in a really good place. Uh, there's a very diverse set of different armies uh, that are playing and can win events. Uh, and so even at your larger events, you've got so many um, armies that are in a really good spot with a chance at the title. Some armies definitely are a little bit better. I would say Corn and Soul Blight Gravelords. Uh, but yeah, you've got a bunch of different things. Uh, this weekend, we had one, two, three, four, five different events uh, taking place over four different countries with 161 players, as well as there being at least one team event this weekend uh, in England, which is cool. So we're going to go through those and I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do want to help support the show, please do. Our first event is the Devon Destruction being held in Devon with 58 players looking to battle it out, which is very fun. Lots of my friends at Plymouth Troll Slayers at the event, so we love that. That's pretty good. Um, and we did have a couple of people in the chat who were at the event, which is cool. And they were saying they had a really great time. It was in Crediton in a school and it was organized by Curtin Games. Exactly. Day two, they had beer that was only a pound each, which is crazy. Of our 58 players, we only had one 5-0, and that's Matt Lyons of the Pro Painted Studios. They make a, great, a, a bunch of really awesome tokens, and he was using a Carriage and Overlord's army. However, Matt is a big fan of uh, painting and kit bashing and all these other things, and he even runs, or used to run, I think, a ranking system for uh, you know hobbyists that do really well in uh, painting at tournaments as well. And so his army is obviously excellent. It's a Carriage and Overlord's army that has been kit bashed, and all of it is goblin themed. So he has a goblin Gotrek. He has a bunch of goblins who are <laughs> his engine riggers. His giant ironclad is more of a, like a big balloon boat, which is fun. And there is some background narrative in Age of Sigmar, especially the city of Tempest Eye is being attacked. I know you're like, this is the stat show, Rob, what the hell? But it's being attacked by a bunch of goblin sky pirates. So it's absolutely worth mentioning that they exist, which is cool. Anyway, his actual army, uh, was a Barrack Zon list with an Arcanaut Admiral, an Aether Chemist, and an Endrin Master with Endrin Harness. Then he's got 10 Arcanaut Company, 6 Endrin Riggers, 10 Thunderers, an Arcanaut Ironclad, and Gotrek. This is quite interesting because he's basically put all of his resources into two places. His Ironclad has got all of that shooting output itself, it's 500 points, and carries around a large unit of those 10 Thunderers, which is another 300 points inside of it. He'll also have the engine riggers with them as well, and they're going to be able to heal that ironclad loads. I think up to 63 healed back to an ironclad in each one of his turns. So it's very unlikely to die, and it's going to be able to wound tank really well, as well as doing loads and loads of output. And then finally, 500 points of his army is obviously Gotrek, which is going to be able to run around uh, and charge and grab objectives, and it's very difficult to deal with. So it's kind of like a two-threat uh, like almost Death Star kind of army, which is quite fun. And it's very singular, which is cool. Shout out to Matt for doing so incredibly well. Looking at the four ones, we've got a lovely little collection list, including a bunch of armies of renown. We have a legend, Carl Brewster. Just loving it. Just loving it. In 4-1. Uh, well, sorry, four in a draw section. He's, he's no 4-1 loser. He's a 4 and a draw guy, which is great. And he's running, as I've been talking about for the past few weeks, the very popular Maggotkin list. Now, he hasn't gone for just the Gotkin and loads of big monsters, but he has gone for the Glockkin. And it's that counter-charge mechanic that the Gotkin is using that's pinning units in, and it's kind of doing like a like a mini Bellacore with move blocking. It's kind of doing the same thing as Murderlust in a corn army, and so that's what he's been playing with. So he's got the Gotkin in his list in Befouling Host, so you get lots of summoning. 
the pox bring it, stopping bar pipers, that's stopping pylons as well, which is really, uh, really, really uh, important. And he's also brought Bellacore. So as well as doing a debuff and well, not it's not a debuff list, a move block list. He's also adding Bellacore in to shut down even more threats. Then he's got a unit of twenty play bearers, two units of ten play bearers, a unit of nerglings, and a unit of play drones. So he's scoring battle tactics really well thanks to the nerglings. He's Pinning units in so they can't move anywhere. And then he's got the play drones for doing, like, I guess a little bit of damage, I guess. But again, just even more move blocking with that unit. A lot of wounds with a four award save. So Nurgle are very popular right now for that. I'd be interested to see if they do get an update in the Battle Scroll update. I would be expecting that. Uh, Carl in the chat right now is telling us I summoned two great and clean ones in the event for the Battle Tactic. Didn't drop a tactic the entire event. That makes sense. Because. There is so many options for achieving not only the book tactics, but also generally the tactics that are out there at the moment with these. And we are getting to the stage now where battle tactics are things you're going to see dropped uh, less and less, less and less. Right, so Brooke Hurst was running his Gloomstrike Gits, and he was in the 401 section. He was running Jaws of Orc with a Squig Boss, Fungo Cave Shaman, Scrag Rot, and another Squig Boss. One of those characters, the Fungo Cave Shaman, uh, obviously has Hoarfrost in his list, which is very, very effective on his big unit of 10 Boy Grot Bounders or his large unit of 36 Squig Herd. He also had a smaller unit of Squig Hoppers, uh, well, sorry, two smaller units of Squig Hoppers. Then he had the buff pieces in the Sneaky Snufflers and the Gobba Palooza. Gloomspite gets lists right now very much look a lot like this. There's normally a couple of support pieces buffing a couple of hammer units. Boingrot Bounders and Squig Herd are definitely the winners. And in Jaws and Mork, they're particularly good, obviously, because that plus one attack that you're going to get with the jaw attacks. Mike Wilson is a really solid player who builds very specific styles of lists. And this is no surprise that his Daughters of Cain list looks like it does. He's running a Drachi Ganeth, and he's got a Hag Queen on Cauldron of Blood, a Slaughter Queen on Cauldron of Blood, and then a Blood Rat Medusa and two High Gladder Trixes. The trick to this, like we saw when this Daughters of Cain book first came out, is getting the Witch Elf units to hit on twos and wound on twos with a huge amount of attacks, particularly good for running into hordes of models. We are a little bit past the zombie meta at this stage, but it doesn't mean you don't see lots of models on the board. And especially for armies like Gloomspite Gits that are particularly good, this is a really good way of getting rid of a lot of low armor save, high wound density units, uh, because you just have so many attacks from the Witch Elves. And in this case, he has two units of 30 Witch Elves, and then a unit of 10, and then he has two units of uh, Canary Heartrenders and a unit of Life Takers. This is also particularly good because Daughters of Cain are so, so good at scoring their battle tactics, thanks to the Life Takers and the Heartrenders uh, in this list as well. So they score tactics well, and importantly, they fight on the primary well. This is a very, very good list. Uh, that's going to do a lot of mid-board combat damage, and it'd be really fun to see more of this in the meta because I think it would change the meta significantly. However, this is a high production cost army. Not only are the units, those units of 30 Witch Elves going to set you back at least £100 or you know a couple of hundred dollars or thousands of dollar dues. There's also a lot of painting and stuff to do to get those onto the tabletop, and it's also a, going to be a taxing army to play. Uh, so well done to Mike Wilson. Kaskis Skabowski is running Heat Knights of Snesh list with a mask, contorted epitome, with kind of the classic Crown of Dark Secrets, Sigvald and a Lord of Pain. Then 22 Bliss Barb Archers, a unit of 10, 10 Demonettes twice, so two units of 10 Demonettes. Then he's got a unit of Bliss Barb Seekers and a unit of Slick Blade Seekers. So you just do not get a lot in a Sinesh army anymore. You just don't. Pretenders, you get an extra command points, which is interesting. You're shooting a lot with those Bliss Barb Archers, those Demonettes, um, uh, very effective in combat, but they're very cheap as well. Yeah, you just don't get a lot. Uh, I'm incredibly impressed he went 4-1 with this, if I'm 100% honest. Sick Val doing, I guess, a lot of the work in combat, which is pretty interesting. Damien Rees was running Soul Black Grave Lords, and we've been talking a lot about Double Dragon. What about Triple Dragon? So he's got Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon twice. And then he has Manfred von Karstein. This is all in the Legion of Knights sub faction. Then two units of, oh, sorry, one unit of Dead Walker Zombies, a unit of Felbats, and then a unit of Death Rattle Skeletons with the Suffocating Grave Tide. The reason this works so well is very simply because of the hunger. The hunger heals six each combat phase. So these guys are practically immortal in a lot of ways and get rid of them is very challenging especially if you decide to focus one and they decide they're going to use finest hour that turn 
Also, you're going to run them around lot, like a lot like you would run around Stonehorns or Gargants. You're going to put three models into one space on the board, and that's going to cause a real problem for your opponent. If they try and charge one of the dragons, they might have to fight two in combat, and some, most units can't really deal with that. As well as Manfred's ability to teleport out of combat, that's uh, very, very good. Uh, then we have Paul Buckler with his Stormcast Eternals, and he's using the new Draconith Skywing. Uh, Paul would have had early access to these rules, so he would have been uh, able to understand how this army plays really well. So he's running Iona's Crypt Board. He's got Karazai the Scarred, Krondis, a unit of two Storm Drake Guard, and then the Aether Void Pendulum. So Krondis and Karazai are battle line in this army of renown and so a much more like um and so you've just got a thousand points in two big monsters only scriptborn for shutting down healing also as a priest in this has got some nice prayers as well um and then the unit of storm drake guard and then a single storm drake guard so these are just kind of what we just said about legion uh the soul Blight grave lords they're just big monsters that are very difficult to deal with they're going to run around together uh they've got spells they've got prayers um, uh, they're just going to take up a lot of board space. It's kind of the Gargant thing. I don't really, I don't really, I really wish this army wasn't something that was playable in Age of Sigmar, same with Gargants. But here you have it. They're just, they're just not very difficult. They're not very simple for you to deal with. You can put two big monsters on an objective immediately for good objective control. Um, and then it's very hard for your opponent to deal with one or the other. Uh, and then you've got Chris Tomlin with a fresh sheet of courts, also in a 4-1. With Gristlegore, he's got Abhorrent Arc Regent. He's got uh, one of those. He's got an Abhorrent Call King on Royal Terrorgeist and another Abhorrent Call King on Terrorgeist. Then 20 Crypt Ghouls and two units of 10 and the Chalice of Ushran. The Chalice of Ushran does lots of healing and then you just have two big monsters and one of them is going to get plus D3 attacks uh, on their unit and then it's going to do a lot. Wait, he's got three. So he's got three of the big monsters. Same thing. Three big monsters, charge around, hold objectives, fight with extra attacks. But it's just bit like it's just like big monsters, no brains at the moment in at the, at the Dev of Destruction. <laughs> what happened at the Dev of Destruction? Everyone's like, I'm just going to take monsters. Okay. And uh, then Goose White Gits, and then again, another army of renown. Uh, this is being played by Carl Smith with his Trug's Trug Herd. He's got Trug, a dank hold Trug boss. He always got two of those, sorry. Then he's got a unit of three rock guts, a unit of six rock guts, two units of three fell waters, and then two dank cold trogoths. And this army works exactly as you would expect. He does the bonk stonks at the beginning. Everyone gets a five up ward save. Or if you're playing shooting, maybe you make it so only six is hit. Uh, it might be the other way. That's the kind of trog special rule. There's an incredible amount of healing in this army. Very difficult to get rid of these models. If you do eventually wipe out one of these units, the unit's coming back at half strength from the Loon Shrine. Uh, as well, which is very, very effective. And he's just really, really good. So there you go. Big monsters all the time at the Devon Destruction. A very interesting meta. Uh, so yeah, very, very cool. I hope I'm running a good time. Our next event takes us to Australia and the Bloodright GT 2023, uh, organized by Adam Bajardi and Liam Burnett Blue. Very cool logo for this event. The Bloodright GT it looks awesome, organized by Shadow Hammer. Uh, so shout out to everyone there. Uh, we, they had a total of 55 players making it the second biggest event um, this, uh, this weekend, just gone. And if we go and look at the first place, we can see first place was won by Tom Rands with his Stormcast Eternals Hammers of Sigmar. And he was running a Scions of the Stormless, so he'd be able to deep strike a bunch of stuff in Hammers of Sigmar. He had a Knight Zephyros, a Knight Encanter, a Knight Relictor, and then three Knight Valexas. So don't forget, Knight Valexas do the AoE Mortal Wounds. The Knight uh, Relictor is going to be able to do the trans translocations uh, prayer, so teleport units around. And the Knight Encanter has got the ability to turn off an enemy spell, an auto unbind, as well as having Blizzard in the list as well. Then he's got a unit of two Formulators, a unit of four Tempesters, which are going to be doing a lot of shooting. These are all Draconiths, so they're good um, in combat as well oh sorry they're, they're good in combat and they've got good shooting because they're night and tempesters but they're good because of the draconith mounts a unit of five liberators and a unit of five vanguard hunters and then three evocators on celestial dracolines, lines which i have been assured many times by everyone in the world are a great unit i just can't see it uh but sure and as you can see they've gone five one so i'm obviously wrong uh, and then a unit of three Vanguard Raptors with long strike crossbows so those long strike crossbows obviously have got the holy command to be able to shoot twice 
Oh, has he got a double holy command? Yeah, he's got call for aid and thunderbolt volley. So he's going to be able to shoot that unit twice, once per battle, and also return one of these units of liberators um, once per game as well on the board, which is fun. So it does AoE mortal wound damage at range. It can teleport a unit across the board. Then it's going to be able to do a lot of shooting to clear screens, thanks to the Tempesters, right? Uh, and then uh, we have uh, damage in combat. Uh, or it's also going to be able to shoot units with the long strikes, and then it's going to be able to do damage in combat from the Dracolines, as well as the Tempesters, and those amazing Formulators, which still do crazy damage, even this late into the edition from when that first got released. So they've got the ability to definitely clear chaff, the ability to do high impact damage via mortal wounds from the Velixers and also the long strikes. And then they've got the ability to bring some solid damage into other units across the board. So it definitely is going to knock out a bunch of key pieces very early, uh, definitely diminish board control as well, and then just give you a lot of problem units that you've got to deal with. It's a really fun list. And he should be super chuffed with himself. Shout out to Tom Rands. In the 4-1 bracket, we've got some great lists. We've got Jacob Strachan with his Luminath Realm Lord Zytrek, MSU No Tech list. Chris Murphy with his Silverneth Heartwood using Alariel, who I think is absolutely back. Belthanos also. Can't wait to see that hit the tabletop. I expect to see a lot of Belthanos armies do quite well. Paul Hin Ho with his Slaves to Darkness Knights of the Empty Throne list. Jacob Mears with his Blades of Corn and Stephen Drury with his Blades of Corn Blood Lords. They're, they're quite different, obviously. You know, same core mechanics are making them work well. Samuel Strachan, uh, I think the brother of Jacob Strachan. That's fun. Or father or, or husband, uh, actually. I don't know which one. I uh, hope you're very happy together. Uh, OCR Bone Reapers in Noel Myriad, and then Tully Mansfield with his Soulblight Grave Lords Legion of the Night with some big dragons. Right, if we just look through the list quickly, our Luminous Realm Lords list is very much like what we saw at the World Championships. We had, uh, the, well, the Warhammer ones. Sonari and Lightner, Sonari Lawseeker, the Light of Altharian, Elenia and Elethor, and Severith. So they're all casters, and they're all going to do a bunch of really good spells, uh, which you do have a lot of good spells in the spell lore for Luminath Realm Lords. And then 10 Wardens, yeah, 10 Wardens, 5 Dawn Riders, 2 units of 10 Blade Lords, another unit of Dawn Riders, and then you've got the Hishian Twinstone, Geminid of Orgish, and Suffocating Gravetide. So the Hishian Twin Twinstones is interesting because that buffs the casting for all of those casters, same as being in Zytrek, which is going to buff your casting again. Then Geminids is really good for shutting down any com enemy commands, and Gravetide, obviously, for the Mortal Wounds. And then at that point, you've got a really good melee unit in the... Um, uh, Light of Altharian and Elena and Elethor doing some really good uh, mortal wound damage as the game goes on, as well as doing some good combat. Severith also for bopping around the board, grabbing objectives and doing battle tactics. Uh, then finally, you've got Dawn, the Dawn Riders and the Blade Lords, who are, while fragile enough, going to do enough damage in the right places that you can be able to box out certain zones on the board, which I think is quite good. Okay, so uh, really good. Our Silver Death list is Heartwood with Alariel, Arch Revenant, and a Branch Witch, and then a unit of six and a unit of three Kernoth Hunters with Great Bows. Alariel is going to summon another unit of three, taking you up to 12 Great Bows at long range. They're going to be shooting and doing long range damage, which means you have to run towards them to shut them down. And the whole while, Alariel is going to be using her very fast movement to charge up the board, do damage, and then strike and fade away. Um, and this is going to be buffed by the Command Trait Warsing, which adds to the movement. Then you've got an Awakened Wildwood and the Spice Warm Hive uh, for additional movement and also teleporting as well. And then two units of five Tree Revenants for battle tactics. They're, re they're going to be really good. Three core battle tactics. Being outside the opponent's territory is definitely something they're going to go for. Uh, being on the board edges is going to be really good for these guys as well. Um, and then the Verse Ball Gem is going to be really good for um, being able to cast a spell battle tactics. So just really good. Really good list. Uh, then you've got Slave Startless Empty Throne, and this is just going to be Varangard, Chaos Social Lord, Chaos Social Lord, Varangard, Varangard, all with the Mark of Corn and one unit of Untamed same Beasts. One unit, sorry, of the Varangard is Mark and Nurgle, so they're going to be a little bit more of a pinning unit, uh, and then the Corn units are going to come in. And just everyone fights twice. Everyone charges in, fights twice. Very tough. Three up armor saves, five up spell ignore. So not, uh, sorry, five up mortal wound save against spells and stuff. Just very good. Loads of damage. Really tanky. Pin you in. Just really, really good. Then our Blades Core list is a Bloodthirst from a Fetid Fury, a Slaughter Priest, two of those, a Bloodmaster, two of those, 
and then Scarbrand. Then some Flesh Hounds, some Blood Reavers, and some Claws of Karnak for that pre-game move. Claws of Karnak so hot right now. Pre-game move, hold, so you can charge into the mid-board. Um, uh, so you, the enemy has to charge them. You charge into the mid-board with Scarbrand. Bloodthirst from Fetter Fury makes him like a, an absolute missile, just charges anywhere on the board. Um, and then obviously because of uh, Firebrand, he's a priest. Um, and he's going to be able to, like, you know, buff up saves and do other stuff as well. So this is very much classic. I think Corn is very solved for this meta, um, and it all functions around the Bloodthirster and Fetter Fury and Scarbrand. But some, in some cases, you get a slightly different Corn list, like we're seeing now. Uh, that's Blood Lords with a Bloodmaster, Slaughter Priest, Slaughter Priest, Bloodthirster and Fetter Fury, uh, and then Bellacore. And then this is a unit of twenty Blood Letters, which basically one for one replace Scarbrand. And, and in this case, Bellacore is going to shut down the enemy units. That's the plan. So slightly different, but, you know, the same. And then you have Blood Crushers for just doing the worst thing in the world, which is um, using uh, the corn ability. I was going to say Might Destroyers. It's absolutely not that. Murder Lust and just pin the enemy in, and then you can't play Warhammer, which is what the Glockkin does as well. There's a lot of, like, don't let people play Warhammer at the minute. It's quite interesting. Glockkin does that. Yeah, there's a lot of that at the moment. Our OCR Bone Reapers list has got Caracross, Bone Shaper, Mortis, and Soul Mason. Then five Death Riders, two units of 20 Mortec Guard, a unit of Immortis Guard, and then Necropolis Stalkers. Uh, interestingly, they don't have a Harvester in here, which is quite fun. Uh, but you do have the Caracross uh, and then the Bone Shaper with the Artisan's Key. So you can still potentially return up to nine models to each of the Mortec Guard units each hero phase, which probably feels like enough and you don't need the Harvester to do any more. Um, and then you've got the Immortus Guard and the Stalkers uh, who can do some great combat. Obviously, everyone's get plus one to save, plus one to hit. You're stealing command points. Like This is still an absolutely solid list, in my opinion. Um, and it's got a very solid front line. Two units of Mortec Guard. Uh, two, two units of 20 Death Riders. Really good. That's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. Punching through 20 more tech guard is not easy. And then you've got Soulblight Grave Lords with a Vampire Lord, a Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon, and a Necromancer. Then you've got 20 zombies, six Fell Bats, Dire Wolves, a Terror Geist, five Blood Knights, and 20 Grave Guard, all in the Legion Knight sub faction, which is counter charge again. Shut up down the opponent's ability to do stuff. Great uh, hunger from the Zombie Dragon, great combat from the Terror Geist, Blood Knights, and the Grave Guard. They've all got different move speed. Um, so you've got like counter charging terror guys and blood knights, grave guard who could like charge in later to mop stuff up. Yeah, very, very solid um, from the blood right GT. I hope everyone in Australia is having a good time. I, you know, just a great, a great group group of. Our next event is the War Master GT over in Australia, Australia, and the event was won twenty four players by Jordan Rees with his Blades of Corn Gore Tide Army. Let's go. With uh, a Bloodthirster and Fettered Fury, Drum, the one Wounder of Worlds, Slaughter Priest and a Blood Secretor, Scar Blood Wrath. Then 10 Blood Warriors, 8 Cores of Karnak, 10 Blood Reavers, 10 more Blood Reavers, and a big unit of 10 Skull Reapers to do a ton of damage. However, however, he's used the Regiment of Renown, the Coven of Thrix, which is a Zinch Regiment of Renown in a Corn Army, which means he's got a Magister from the Coven of uh, Thrix. Then he has a unit of 10 Pink Horrors, and then he has the Burning Sigil of Zinch, the Demonic Simulacrum, and the Tome of Eyes. And the big trick here is the, big, the Burning Sigil of Zinch in a Zinch Army is 70 points. And what this does is it has an AoE chance to spawn um, to spawn spawn uh, on a four up. You do D three mortal wounds. If any models are killed the first time a model is killed, sorry, in each hero phase, then you generate a spawn. And obviously that spawn becomes another model on the board, which does like a murder lust style block. And in addition, also is another blood tithe you can put on the tour, uh, the board as well, which is quite fun. But don't forget the Magister also has got the ability uh, to potentially kill itself, which is quite interesting. Uh, but yeah, this is very, very good. The uh, Burning Sigil of Zinch is very, very solid. Uh, and the Dominic Sil Simulacrum um, and the Tome of Eyes also fairly effective. So, you know, it's not too dissimilar to a normal core list in the Bloodthirster and Infected Fury and also its unit that it's going to make go and beat stuff up, which is the Skull Reapers. Uh, everything else is for blocking stuff in. I mean, you know, the Templar Warriors is legit tough to shift. So you've got a bit of a hammer and anvil. It's got 10 pink horrors as well. 
which is good, although they can't split and split again. Uh, and then it's all about just, again, more murder lust, more pinning units in to your opponent's deployment. In the four ones, we've got some very interesting and fun stuff. Uh, we've got Rob Ballantyne with his uh, Gloomspike Gits, Jaws of Mork, B, B Rhea with his Carriage and Overlords, Barak Nah, and then James Panek with his Stormcast Eternals, Hammers of Sigma. Okay. So let's look at the list. Our Jaws of Mork list has got Scrag Rot, Squig Boss with Nash's Squig, and a Web Spinner Shaman with Hoarfrost. Then 10 Boing Grots, two units of five Boing Grots, 40 shooters, and then our classic 36 Squig Herd. With Hoarfrost, it seems like they're very good. Then Gobblepalooza and Loon Smasher Fanatics. So the Gobblepalooza, obviously, for the buffs, and the Loon Smasher Fanatics to obviously pop out of the unit of shooters, which will be screening all of the flying units in the Boing Grot Bounders uh, that are going to charge over the top and hit whatever hits you, basically. With the Clammy Hand, obviously, um, going to be reducing down uh, you save as well. Oh no, coming hand helping you return slain models quicker. Uh, so yeah, like I'm going to say that like it's fairly solved. It's nice seeing more of these like shooters and stabber units on the board, which I like. Then carriage and overlords barrack. No, you got a navigator, an admiral, a chemist, and then Brock Grungson. Ten Arcanaut Company. You got two of those, and then you've got ten Gunstruck Thunderers all in the ironclad, and then a frigate also with a unit of Endrin riggers. So. You do have a little bit more of a unit that can go grab objectives in the frigate, uh, and then also the engine riggers, and then of course the ironclad is just going to be flying around with the unit of thunderers. And finally, we have seen Neve Black Talon's uh, army of renown or regiment of renown pop out. Uh, so it's hammers of Sigmar, and we've got a knight encounter, a lord Castellan, and then Crondis in the list. And then Neve Black Talon with Neve Black Talon's companions, which lets her, she basically gets strike and fade and gets to pop in and out of the objectives. And then three units of Liberators, and then uh, yeah, three units of Liberators, and then Lorai, and then Evocators on Celest uh, Celestial Dracolines uh, in there as well. Lorai's obviously in with Neve's companions. So another unit of Evocators on Celestial Dracolines doing really well. I must be wrong. And then Aether Void Pendulum was Suffocating Gravetide. Uh, I think the key here is just no one knows what the hell Neve's Black Talons unit's going to do. Uh, <laughs> and then Crondis is in there as well, if I'm honest with you. I hope everyone in Australia had a great time at this event. Our next event takes us over to Sweden for the Rosala Get, where 18, uh, sorry, 16 players bowed it out. And in first place, we have Jonas Johansson with his Soulblight Grave Lords. He's got Neferata. This is all in Legion of Blood. Vampire Lord, a Vampire Lord all on foot. And then a Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon with a Cloak of Mist and Shadows. Then three units of 10 Death Rock Skeletons. Two units of five Blood Knights in the list. So this is going to be a classic, a classic, where you get an, uh, an Ethereal save on a unit of Blood Knights. You already have an Ethereal save on the Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon, thanks to the Cloak of Mist and Shadows. They're going to all be charging around, doing everything they can with Neferata helping uh, debuff units with the minus one to hit bubble. Uh, Skeletons is just going to hold objectives and Blood Knights and then the Vampire Lords are going to be charging in. Uh, you are going to have to be a little bit fragile uh, or a little bit like cautious with your board control here. But once the Vampire Lords in and the Blood Knights get in, uh, you're going to be able to do a you're going to be able to take advantage very easily um, of those ethereal saves and do a ton of damage, which is great. We didn't have any four wins at a draw at this event, uh, but I'm going to just quickly shout out Adrian and Eric, uh, who played at this event. So this is in Sweden, as I've said, both whom, of whom, most of whom were 16 years old. And they did really well. They came third and fourth at the event, you know, only, only losing a game and both with three wins and a draw. So both Adrian and Eric should be super happy. Adrian was running Ainet Dikin, Dom Hain. He was running, well, let's find out what he was running. And then Eric was running uh, Maggotkin as well. So our Deepkin list had a bunch of Thralls and a Leviadon. You weren't expecting that. With a couple of backup Alapexes. And then our Nurgle list has a great and clean one. Blobe, Sloppity Bar Piper, and a bunch of Plague Bearers and Putrid Blight Kings. So very much not your classic lists either. So both those two guys should be super chuffed with themselves. Yeah. And both of them only lost to Jonas, who came first. Amazing. Swedish Age of Sigmar looking really bright in the future. So great news for all of those guys. Our last event in southern Ontario, which is basically the USA, was the Age of Sigmar 2000 point fall event <laughs> organized by Chris Sile. 
And at this event, we only had one 5-0, and that was the famous uh, Sarah Ivanakic. Uh, so shout out to Sarah. So she was running Skaven with an Arch Warlock, Thanquil, and a Warlock Engineer. Three lights of 20 clan rats, six storm fiends, a warp lightning cannon, two of those. And this is just a classic list. This is classic. This is, you know, like a bit of a lottery list. If you are able to get off more and more warp power, those six storm fiends are going to just clear a ton of wounds out from enemies. Uh, the warp lightning cannons are so good at doing very specific mortal wound damage at range that you just have to move your big threats forward. Otherwise, they're going to get taken off the board. Then you're just holding the back of the board with the clan rats. Uh, and then Thankwall at some point is going to charge in and do a ton of damage, which is fun. And that's everything from this event because we had no fours and a draw. So. What do we think of the meta so far? I think the meta is very interesting. The meta is starting to get a little bit sketchy because of a couple of different reasons. Number one, these armies of renown are really starting to change the shape of the game. Because now you're not just preparing to play against Gits, which is very, very different to playing against Trug's Trogherd. And Trug's Trogherd has got like a, just a huge amount of healing um, versus some of the other armies. And so that you have to prep for a little bit more interestingly. Brod, although Brod and Brod Stomp didn't feature this week, Brod Stomp, in my personal opinion, is going to be is a massive issue inside of the meta um, as well. And I think that's something we really should think about. We're starting to see like the Ionis list did okay. You know, it went 4-1. That's quite interesting. So these armies of renown are starting to feature more and more as like, you know, competent tournament lists. And then, in addition, the regiments of renown are being, you know, allied in. Uh, or, in Stormcast's case, not allied in because somehow they're allowed in at the same time. So we're in a place where that's very different as well. So my idea, of, my kind of thoughts on the meta as is, is that it is a absolute open field. Some of the lists feel very solved. Corn is a good example. Gits is another example. They feel very solved. Some army books have got a heap of different options. A good example would be Soulbright Gravelords. They have loads of different army, uh, options uh, in the way that they build them. Triple Dragon, uh, sometimes we're going to take Neferara instead, so they're very different and they're very effective as well. Nurgle also seem very strong, and we have this kind of you-can't-play-Warhammer meta with them and Soulbright Gravelords doing counter charges, which is interesting as well. But there is, the meta is so diverse and the armies that are playing, there's no army that's like, you know, this is 10% of the meta. And therefore, because it's not 10% of the meta, there are so many different armies you're going to play against that your run in a tournament is also going to be very interesting as well. Your local meta is going to be so much more dependent on what's going on. Carriage and Overlords, as we know, have got one of the highest win rates in Age of Sigmar at the moment, if not the high, I think it's the highest up until October. I need to get the, the stats updated uh, uh, for that. Um, but like they also have a very large output and very board, uh, poor board presence. And this is kind of the key factor, which I've been talking about for the meta over the course of you know the past few months, is that battle tactics are solved. Scoring in Asia Sigmar is effectively solved. So you're doing one or two things, really. You're trying to hold on the primary and beat your opponent on the primary, or you're just going to delete your opponent's units, very much like we saw with Big Phil and all of his, you know, deleting, uh, like his gits list, where he's just like, I just sent it forward and deleted everything. You can't score if you don't have any units. So that's the stage we're at at the meta right now. There, are, I, there is a diverse range of army lists that could win events. Because of that, the game is very rock, paper, scissors, and your matchup might end up being a little bit worse than you need it to be. However, because your battle tactics is stuff you're almost auto-scoring in some cases, it's all about those engagements and whether or not someone's shutting down your, your way of winning, either by killing all of your units or pinning them down with counter charges and also uh, things like Bellacor. So that means the meta is in a fascinating place. Honestly, a fascinating place. I think you can pick up a lot of armies right now, go to events and have a good time, and your experience is going to be very diverse. And if anything, that is the thing that we want. More than balance, because if an army is too good, you see that played a lot. However, when there's such a diverse range of armies, you end up with a very, uh, you know, very exciting tournament experience where you go to an event and you could play five completely different armies, even the same faction, but it's a different army list. And that's fun to see as well. So I love that. Love where the game's at right now. Excited for more book releases. Can't wait to see more cities on the tabletops in the future. That'd be fun. Flesh it, of course, coming up. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and, you know, like and all those other things. Thanks very much.